Hi there, this is Mar Haddad here again. So in this uh, first lecture, I need to connect uh, the uh, LTE to the uh, router. So I'm going to use the uh, USB stick that I have showed you. I have already the SIM card inside of it. This is for my phone. So uh, I'm just going to connect to it uh, to uh, the MicroTik router. And we have to see how uh, we will have internet. So as you can see here, we have a lab of six points. But before I start doing those points, let me just explain to you what we need to do in this lab. Then I'll come back to the points and start doing them. So let's imagine that we are an ISP providing the LTE to our customers in a place where there is no internet connectivity. There is no cable like, uh, possibility, there is uh, no DSL, there is no fiber, nothing. So in some places where there are no connectivity, and this is a lot in the world. So we have to think, uh, for example, in rural areas, even in the advanced countries, you will see that a lot of rural areas, there is no coverage, only 4G coverage. That's why we have to use the LTE, then uh, we can sell it to our customer as an ISP, but at the same same time we have to be careful because sometimes the customer is using it too much or maybe he's also sharing the service to his for example neighbor then uh, yeah then the usage will be too high and most of the time the LTEs that are limited on capacity so you provide for example per month 30 gigabyte and every time he go more than that he has to pay then at the end you will end up that the customer is paying too much and complaining to us and that's something we have to regulate it but for now let me just show you what we need to do in this lab we have this microtech router i have here a, a haplite ac which has a usb port i'm going to connect my lte so that is the lte usb that i have uh, with me i'm going to connect it to it it has already the sim card so we are going to connect it inside the usb port so this is the usb port there's no cable but i'm just showing you that it's going to be ending up connected to the internet then in this case this one has internet right so we have to think that we are doing the same thing for the customer. We we preparing the router for them, the MicroTik router, and now we are going to install it for the customer. So that means this router is going to be installed to the customer. So that means what? That means the, the customer, in case we connect to the MicroTik router, then he has internet on his PC. But also we can do the wireless as well. So because we also have to provide for the customer wireless. So in case he is also moving on his phone, then also he's able to connect to the wireless and he has internet. So that's what we need to do in this lab, connecting to the LTE to have internet, share the internet. So that means we have to create the DHCP server, we have to do the NAT, and then we have to check if it's gonna uh, work on um, the computer. So this computer is gonna be my computer. And here we put the LTE. I'm going for the first time to use the uh, router OS version seven because uh, at this moment there's version 7 which is still on the beta version which is the development version but I decided to build up this course to be on version 7 and I think that uh, I'm the first one who is now teaching a course for marketing on the version 7. So this is what we're going to do in this lab. Let's go back now to the points and start doing that. Point number one, connect the LTE USB stick to the router which is the router one via its USB port. So let's put the picture here. And let's go directly. So this is, you see, this is the USB stick. I'm just opening it now and I'm going to connect it to the USB port. And here we go. So now it is connected to the USB port. Port number one is done. Port number two, check if the LTE interface has been created and if it's running. So let's go directly to the MicroTik router. So we go to here and let's connect to the MicroTik router. So you can see it is running on version 7.1 beta 3. All right. So this is a uh, version 7. So let's go to the interfaces. And then here we go. You see, we have LTE is showing up and it has an R. R means running. So if we go inside of it, then uh, we can see that uh, this is the status and uh, we can see if there is any traffic happening now. So the LTE is connected and uh, we should be able now to go to uh, the internet in case we have received an IP address. We are going to check that in a moment. Point number two is done. Point number three, create a DHCP client on the LTE interface. Sometimes the LTE interface will provide you directly IP address. But in case not, then what you need to do, you have to go to IP DHCP client. And you can see that now this LTE has already received the IP address. But in case not, in case you don't see on the DHCP client this, then what you can do, you can just create here and say that I want to receive an IP address on the LTE one. You check the DNS, you check the NTP because we want to receive a, the DNS IP from the provider. The NTP, which is for the timing also, we need it also because we need that for the script that we are going to use and uh, also for the default route. So you say here, okay, and let's enable it. 
now it will search and here we go it has received an ip address so you can see that now this lt is uh, fully connected that means what that means my router at this time is really connected to the internet port number three is done port number four check if the router is able to go to the internet so uh, as i look now to the lte i see there is a solid blue uh, color that means that it is connected but uh let's uh, check on uh, the router so we go to the router here and uh, the first thing again to remember that uh, we should receive an IP address so that's something we have seen it so we see we should receive this IP we received it and uh, we have to also be sure that we received as well the uh, gateway so if we go to uh, IP route we see that uh, this is the gateway that is default route it's already there and also the DNS if we go to IP and uh, we go to DNS we see we have received uh, those uh, dynamic uh, DNS. So, so far so good. Now, if I go to the router and I try to ping, for example, 8.8.8.8, .8 we see we have internet. And uh, if you want, we can do something like trash route. So if we go to tools, we go to the uh, trace route. And uh, if we do trace route to 8.8.8.8, .8 you can see that uh, the internet is working perfectly we can reach to the 8.8.8.8 so so far so good now the lte is connected and i have internet but now my uh, isp has limited me for uh, some capacity that i can use per month so that means if i put now the router after i share the internet and i put it for for uh, the customer that means uh, that he's going to use all the bandwidth and then any more capacity he's doing it then he has to pay for it now in my case let's say i am the isp i'm doing that work and i have for example something like 30 gigabyte then per month he can use anything more than that then he has to pay for that so we have to think like okay how can we limit that that's something i'm going to show you how you can do that so we can say for example per day he can use one gigabyte so if he has 30 gigabyte per whole month then we make every uh, day he has one gigabyte. In case you reach it, then poof, we got disconnected. Or maybe we can say that we will allow him to go to 800 megabyte on the normal speed. But once he reached the 800 megabyte, then directly a uh, queue will be created and then he has less uh, capacity, less bandwidth to be used. Then that means also less capacity. But all of those things, I'm going to show it to you in this course. Point number four is done. Point number five. Now share the internet from router one so the PC can be connected to the internet. So if we go now to my computer and if you see, if I do ping google.com yeah you see i don't have anything if i ping the ip also it's not working why because my computer is connected to the router so we have this scenario so now we have internet over here so this one is connected to the internet now we need to share the internet so what we need to do we have to think of uh, the following we have to uh, make a, for example a bridge interface and inside this bridge interface i put ethernet uh, one two three and so forth all right so all the interfaces i put them over here and on this interface i put an ip i would choose 10.10.10.1 all right so this is something that means that it's an interface connected to my local area network then i will create the dhcp server on it to provide ip addresses from 10.10.10.2 .10 .10 until Two five four. That means anyone like my computer is connected to the LAN, then he will receive an IP from this range. Then I have to create NAT. Network address translation. That means I will allow those private IP addresses to be translated to be able to go to the internet. So those are the steps that I need to do, and uh, we have to do it right away. So let's go to the router. What you can do if you want to just use Ethernet uh, 2 only, that's possible. But I will, because we are, we are thinking that we are putting this router to a customer. So what we can do, we can create a bridge. All right. And inside this bridge, I'm going to put all ports, including the wireless, because we have to think that we are also configuring the wireless to the, to the customer. All right. So, well, you know what? Because I will need to use Ethernet uh, 1 later. So I'm going to put on the Ethernet 2. We gotta get disconnected now because we're moving this to a bridge. Reconnect. So we go back. So ports. Ethernet 2, Ethernet 3, Ethernet 4, and Ethernet 5. We can put also the wireless, but 
yeah, I'm not going to configure now the wireless. Uh, if you want it straightforward, well, let's just do it. Because we are thinking that we are putting also the customer, the shuttle to the customer, and he was also wireless. So I will create the wireless, and let's create here a key for the wireless. I'll make it very fast. And let's put the key one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, for example. And we enable the WLAN one, which is the 2.4 gigahertz. That's the one I put it inside the bridge. And I will put for it the security that I have created. And this should be AP bridge. Let's put it maybe N. All right, so now this router uh, has uh, all the, the interfaces. Uh, including the, the wireless LAN is inside the bridge. Very good. Now, what we need to do, we have to create an IP on this bridge, which is the IP for the local area network, so which is going to be the gateway for the users who are connected to the ports on the uh, router or to the wireless. So we have to put something like 10.10.10.1. You can put any local IP address you want. And this is going to be on the bridge. Excellent. So this is on the bridge now. Now we need to create the DHCP server to distribute IP to anyone connected, like my computer. You want an IP to be getting from this uh, router. So IP DHCP server, DHCP setup we created on the bridge. I'm going fast on these things because I assume that you already know how to do all those steps. In case not, I have another course which is speaking about the network associate. I'm going to leave for you the link. You can just join it and there I speak in details about each of these steps. So this is the gateway. These are the IPs which are going to be provided from 2 to 254, correct? And let's put DNS we want to receive on the PCs, something like this. Excellent. And last thing we need to do is to do the NAT. Remember, we said we have to do the NAT to translate the local IP address to go to the internet. IP firewall NAT, we say source NAT. Anything coming from anywhere going out from the interface LTE1. So LTE1 is the one interface. Then the action is to masquerade. And OK. So now this should be OK. And we should be able now in a moment see if we have internet on our computer. Point number five is done. Point number six, go to your PC and the ping to google.com. Do you have a reply? Let's open the command prompt. Let's first check if we receive the IP from 10.10.10.10, .10 not really. So I have to say IP config slash renew. So it communicate with the DHCP server and that's what we call it Dora. And here we go. It has received the IP. You see 10.10.10.254. Very good. If I try to make ping to google.com, yes, I'm connected to the internet and I'm connected via the LTE. All right. And if you want, we can do trace route. And we go to google.com, for example, then it would show me the hops that is going. And we are going to see it's going to, yes, this one, 192.8.8.1. And if you look here on the IP address, this is the IP, which is uh, going to be the gateway for this LTE, which is over here. IP route, you see, gateway 192.8.8.1. So this is the LTE provider. All right, so very good. And now, of course, they are hiding their IP addresses. They don't want anyone to know what are the IP of the uh, ISP that uh, we are using. So some uh, ISPs do that. They just hide the IP address. But now in a moment, we should see that we are able to go to google.com. So here we go. We can see that we have reached to google.com. Very good. Now let's check what is the speed that we have, right? So let's open, uh, for example, speed test. We go to speedtest.net and I'll go to the speed test to see how much speed I have on this LTE. The ping is 23 milliseconds. I have downloaded something like three, almost four megabit per second. That is the download and the upload is Yeah, something like five megabit per second, which is not bad, right? Because I'm using a 4G now, LTE 4G. That is really not bad. But if you make calculation, how much you can spend 
capacity on the say because most of the time we're going to use the download 3.6 let's say that it is we make it something like a four right so we say that this is the uh, the speed so four megabit per second four megabit per second means four thousand kilobit per second correct that's the speed now to know um, how much the capacity we can get per second we have to divide it by eight why because we are now going to kilobyte and we know that every eight bits makes one byte that means that uh, 4000 bits we have to divide it by eight to be able to get the byte so that means that we can do every second 500 kilobyte of capacity 500 kilobyte per second that means per minute we have 30,000 kilobyte that's per minute per hour times 60 1,800,000 kilobyte that's per hour per 24 hour so look how much we have 43,200,000 kilobyte so that means that uh, if we think of it on megabyte that's 43,200 megabyte so in gigabyte so if we divide this by 1 million that means we can do on this speed 43.2 gigabyte per day so if we use all the day the bandwidth uh, that we have as speed we can do up to 43.2 gigabyte but most of the isp will say to you you have 30 gigabyte per month while if you see now i can do if i just make download for something and i keep it all day i'm using here 24 hours all day right so that means during the day and also during the night so that's not a problem if i use it fully then i can do up to 43 gigabyte but the isp say that you have 30 gigabyte per month and if you do more than that you have to pay for it so think of how much the the customer has to pay for this but also you may be you you are selling as well this service to your customer but you are of course uh, not uh, the one who is making these uh, sim cards so that means also you have to charge your customer but also you have to pay to the provider that he's providing for you the sim card and that's something really you have to be careful here so that's why we have to now see how can we do in a way that we don't get more than 30 gigabyte per month how can we limit that all right so remember that my usb and my lte can do let's say 40 gigabyte per day so let's say 40 gigabyte times 30 then it is 1200 gigabyte while we only have 30 gigabyte allowed per month all right so you see the calculation that i've done that's only to show you that it's very important that we have to limit the capacity. Point number six is done. And with this point, I have showed you how you can connect the LTE to your router, how to make it working, how you can share the internet to the internal users. Also on the wireless, so now if anyone connect to my wireless, he can go to the internet also because we put the wireless inside the bridge. And also I've showed you the calculation, how much approximately uh, we can get as uh, capacity per day and then we calculate times 30 to know how much per month we can get based on the bandwidth speed that we have done on the LTE. Now the idea is that all right we know everything we need to limit how can we limit that's something I'm going to show you in the upcoming lecture. So I hope that this lecture was informative for you and I'll see you in the upcoming lecture.